let's start. So welcome to the webinar of testing websites with NVDA. Uh, NVDA is a very popular screen reader. Sorry. Not NVIDIA, that's a completely different animal. Uh, so it's a very popular screen reader that is free. And right now it's the most popular screen reader in the world. It used to be JAWS, but like last month, I think, it changed to NVDA. So knowing how to test with it is very important because it's, it's literally the most popular one for Windows. It doesn't work for iOS. For iOS or Mac OS, I think is the name of it, uh, you know, the Apple operating systems and what now they use voiceover. So, but knowing that so many more computers use Windows other than Apple's operating system. So that's why it makes it so important to learn how to do it. Now, what I thought we can do, if you go on their website, they it's they have a lot of information about it. And they also have a guide you can buy guides and they also have supports. It's a free screen reader. So if you are in a position that you, you are able to donate to it, I strongly recommend it to you do it um, if you can, of course. So what I thought we do today is I thought we uh, we test two websites with it. We test my, my personal website, which is this one, and we test another website. The other website we're going to test is Sunday Riley, they're a multi-million dollar e-commerce website. And we're going to do a quick testing via NVDA. As for my website, I coded it in October, but I did not test it with the screen reader when it was done. And uh, I didn't do it because I was too arrogant. I thought, oh, I know area, I know accessibility, I don't need to test it. And uh, this was the mistake. You should always test your website with screen readers, like always, and many different screen readers. Just testing with one screen reader is a big mistake because screen readers have a lot of quirks, okay? And you, this, the earlier you catch them, the better they're gonna work. Now, you, you cannot think that every single feature is gonna work on all screen readers. This is impossible. And if you're trying to do that, don't, because that's like saying, oh, every feature must work on every browser. And there are a lot of bugs that screen readers have that are not being addressed. So don't worry about it. Um, but it is important imperative that you test with screen readers. So I'm going to test, start testing my website. And for that, I'm going to turn it on, turn on the screen reader. I'm not gonna show you options, too many options of the screen reader because we're just gonna do testing today, but maybe we can do a different webinar. Okay. So it's going to be, a, this is the startup for NVDA. Okay. So to, to stop NVDA from talking, you click control or shift. Okay, and I also wanna show you this. This is a speech viewer. So every, every some screen readers, excuse me, come with speech viewers, which means that you can either have the screen reader talk to you and output the, the speech via text, or you can have the screen reader not talk at all and just output it via text. This is especially useful if you want to do quick testing and you don't need the audio feedback from the screen reader. So I'm going to have this turned on and you can follow through the screen reader in the box, okay? Um, let me see what else I can do. I can also open the on-screen keyboard. So we also have the on-screen key keyboard and so can, um, so now I'm going to change my settings so you, can, you guys can hear the screen reader. Okay, so um, I'm going to do a test here and I'm going to do some test, a testing and let me know if you can hear the screen reader, okay? M -M Banner landmark homepage graphic visited link. 870-253-3297 link. Navigation landmark list with seven items home visited link current page. Okay, can anybody hear the screen reader? Michael can hear it, okay, awesome. Okay. Okay, seems like people can hear the screen reader. Awesome. So um, let's start by, by, by scanning the, the header of our site, okay? So let me go to... 870. Okay, so... Home visited link. Home page graphic. 
I am pressing buttons on my keyboard and you can see them on the on-screen keyboard. So I don't have to repeat myself um, unless uh, someone has, um, if, if anyone is if has difficulty seeing it, just uh, let me know. So how do you get to the speech viewer? Uh, you can, I will show it to that later. You, you go to the speech viewer by going on settings and then tools. I can show you. Okay, so let's start scanning the, the header. Um, what I can do actually is I can refresh my page and then I can start, whoops, I can start typing. Banner landmark, skip to main content link. Oops. Skip to main content link. Okay, this is the first interactive element. The first interactive element of every accessible website should be the skip to main content. What this allows us to do is allows us to just skip the navigation and just skip to the main. If I click enter, I'm redirected to the main. Accessibility developer heading level two contact me clickable email that it required invalid entry has auto complete. So what the, the screen reader is doing now it's it's reading the whole main region. And I mean this is good because whenever users skip the the navigation, they want to go straight to the content of the site. Okay. So now let's go let's go back up. Meet. And Okay, so I am here in skip to main content. Now I'm gonna go. Next interactive element should be my logo. Let's let's see what the screen reader says. Homepage graphic visited link. Okay, so you might be wondering, Stephanie, why does it say homepage graphic and why doesn't it say logo or logo of Stephanie Newman? Well, because logos in websites usually when they're on the header, they're not representing themselves. They're usually links, or what uh, they're usually image links. Okay, and the image link is usually a link that has an image. It can have either image and a text or only an image. When it has only an image, you need that you add an out to the image or an area label to the link in order for the users to know where, the, where they're going to be redirected. So I almost never describe the image in the image link, but I describe the link or the page it's going to lead to. So in this case, it is absolutely correct that the image doesn't say logo, it says homepage because it's a linked image. So this is this is good. And now let's go to the, the next interactive element should be the, the phone number. And the way to test websites is you use tab and you jump through interactive elements and that's how you test them. Then you can also use the browsing mode, which in NVDA is if you press the arrow key down, uh, then you read the whole page or you can jump from heading to heading with H that's with NVDA. So now let's jump to the phone number to see if it's read properly. Link. Yes, and it says link, but it is a phone number, so it's it's fine in this case. Now let's go into the. Now the next interactive element is going to be the email. Let's see. If, no, excuse me. The next interactive element element is going to be our navigation. Let's see if it's coded properly. Navigation landmark list with seven items. Home visited link current page. Okay. Notice how the screen reader said navigation. This is because I'm using the nav element. So I'm using semantic HTML5 landmarks on my site. And this allows the screen readers to announce it correctly. So if I just had a bunch of links without the nav element, it would just have said links or link. And I'm also using an unordered list so the users would know, okay, so there's seven items in this navigation. And that's, um, that's really good. It's really good so far. And also the screen reader said current page. This is a AAA WGAC recommendation called location. And the more the user knows where they are, in this case, I added a special markup on my on my navigation that marks it up. For example, if I'm on the portfolio, the, the screen reader is going to say, okay, current page portfolio. So now we are on the home page and let's go. Let's go continue browsing. Portfolio visited link. Testimonials link. Courses visited link. Blog visited link. Okay, and you know it says visited link, or it says you can say just link. This these are setting settings you can disable in your screen readers, but I usually leave the screen readers verbose as possible so I can test various things. But the users can just disable it. So instead of saying, for example, courses visited link, it can just say courses link. But you don't have to worry about the settings of specific screen readers because there's so many. So just make sure that your website is semantically coded. Okay, so now we are on the navigation. We don't need to finish the navigation because it is 
it looks like it's done. I mean, if I'm auditing a site, I would I would browse every single link in the navigation because it's very important. But since I'm just teaching you, I'm just going to skip it. Now let's go to the heading number one, which is Web Accessibility Developer. And to do that, I'm going to press H. Main landmark Web Accessibility Developer heading level one. So you, you're not seeing the you're not seeing the focus ring that you have on block. Why? Because the heading is not interactive element. Interactive elements are only form form controls, buttons, links, and I think some other, but I can't remember them off the top of my head. So those are the interactive elements that have focus rings, but you can interact with the heading. That's why it doesn't have a focus ring. Some screen readers would have focus rings on everything like JAWS. JAWS adds a focus ring on every element. And uh, mobile screen readers such as voiceover and Talk back, they also add focus rings, but NVDA doesn't. Now there's an add-on you can add. Actually, the add-on is only only for interactive elements. So, and anyways, uh, so I'm on heading number one, web accessibility developer, which is this over here. So right now we're here, and if I play, play if I press H again, I'm going to be here. Contact me. Now let's do that. Contact me heading level two. So this means that my heading structure on the website is really good. I start with heading level one and then right beneath it is heading level two. And this is something I see so many websites has it wrong. You're not supposed to skip headings, okay? Your headings should be the same. Excuse me. You can have, you can have um, headings that are, you can have multiple H2 headings, but you shouldn't go from H1 to H5, okay? That's, that's just bad for many reasons. We're gonna go later. So now we're at heading level, in level two, contact me. Now, I want to show you something that I think is wrong. So I'm going to go press tab again, okay? Email that it required invalid entry has auto-complete. See how, okay, <laughs> see how verbose on, the, on screen oops, and I'm sorry. See how verbose the, the screen is when they land on the input? Because inputs are very tricky. They require a lot of information from the user, even if it's just an email. So when I landed on it, it says email edit required invalid entry has auto complete. That's a lot of information, but that also means that, it, that the input field is coded correctly. And see, it has the the required that is invisible on the screen reader picks up. Okay, Dewey says focus rings on non-interactive elements sound to me like difficult for testing if you don't have different style, difficult to distinguish and to see which focus rings are correct and which are not. You're right, yes. Yes, I think JAWS has different focus rings for non-interactive elements, but you are absolutely right. Uh, but mobile screen readers, I don't think they do. That's that's an interesting point, yes. Because it's very important that interactive elements has focus rings, okay? Because otherwise, if not every user that is disabled uses a screen reader. So you need to be able to distinguish which interactive element you have focused. So you're right. Now I'm going to jump to the next element, which is message. Message edit required invalid entry multi-line. Yeah, and it, like. yeah, and it says multi-line because it is. I'm using text area element instead of an email element. Now I want to show you something that I think is wrong but with me testing. Something is wrong with my form right now, and I'm going to give you guys a chance to guess it. So I'm going to go to the last. Excuse me. I'm going to go to the last interactive element, which is contact me, and I'm going to press tab. I, I'm I'm navigating the page with tab, by the way. If you if, if you can see it with the on-screen keyboard. Okay. So from contact me, I'm going to jump to email. Email that it required invalid entry has auto-complete. Yeah, it, it said blank, but I interrupted it. So if you can, do you know what is wrong here? Like someone is jumping from the contact me to the email field, and then the screen there says email edit required. Okay, I'm going to tell you. What's wrong is that the user jumps from the contact me to the email, but it doesn't say what the email is used for. Okay, you can require an, or you can request an email from someone for so many reasons to enroll in their newsletter, or in this case, to contact them to place an order for checkout purposes. The problem is that the screen reader is not announcing it, and it's not announcing it because it's my fault. <laughs> I did not code this correctly. What I should have done is I should have en enclosed, whoops, I should have enclosed this um, this form in a field set 
And this shouldn't have been an H2, it should have been a legend with an field set. And if I had done that, whenever a screen reader lands on the email, it's going to say, contact me, email required. Okay, so this is the first um, issue I see. And I can only see this problem because I'm testing with a screen reader. And it's impossible to see if you're not. And this is only a problem if you have a contact form or any form on a page that is not a contact page. If you go on the contact page, you don't need the field set and the legend because the user is already on the contact page. But in this case, I have so many other, I have a lot of other, oops. I have testimonial. A lot of other components on this page. I have testimonials, I have links to my courses, I have a newsletter form. Yes, I have another form. So if you have more than one form, always enclose them with field sets because you don't know how people are going to jump to the form. So right now people can, they can fill in the form, but they don't know what they're filling in it for. Okay, so that's going on my list for me to fix it. Okay, now let's uh, finish testing the form. Message headed required invalid entry multi-line. Send message button. Did you hear that sound? Let's try it again. Send message button. So you see the beeping sound or the input sound, that means that the, the mode of the screen reader has changed from browse mode to input mode. And the difference between input mode and browse mode is that in input mode, if I press H, if I press H, oops. Web accessible. H. If I press H on input mode, I'm just H. typing H. But if I press H and I'm in browse mode, I'm going to jump from heading to heading. Let me show you. H, H, M, and accessibility to okay, right now I am in browse mode. Now, if I press H, 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 oops, banner landmark, main landmark web accessibility. All right, there you go. Heading level one. So now I'm in browse mode, and I'm browse mode. I'm pressing H, and I'm jumping from heading to heading. Contact me, heading level testimonials, head, my M, and accessibility courses, heading level two, newsletter, heading level two. There we go. So that this is the, the difference between browse mode and input mode. Okay. And uh, now we can continue testing. And NVDA speech. The next, the next thing we can test is my video. Let's see how that works. Send Let's say that I want to go from send message to the video. I'm like, oh, this seems like a talented developer. Maybe I want to hire her, but first I want to watch her video. So let's go there. On screen keep with your video player frame. Okay, see that? I am on the send message button. On okay. and accessibility message edit. I'm on the screen me send message button and I want to go to the video. So I'm going to press tab and look closely what happens. Suddenly, my focus lands on an invisible element that doesn't have an accessible name. So my focus right now has disappeared. I don't know where my focus is. I know it's on some sort of an interactive element such as a button or a link, but I don't know what it is. This is really bad. This is means this means lost focus and it's especially bad for screen reader users because they rely on focus to navigate the site. But now that the focus has disappeared, I don't know where I am. I am in no man's land. So this is another thing to look for when testing with screen readers. Now I'm gonna press tap again. That's also bad, that's blank. That means, the, again, the screener has landed on an interactive element with no name. So I don't know what's gonna happen if I press the space bar or if I press enter. Now, in this case, this error comes from the Wistia player, okay? And this is a third party plugin and you can't fix it. <laughs> what, you, what you do is you have two options. First, email the third party plugin and if you paid for it, then the chances are that they will be more motivated to repair it because they don't want to lose you as a client. And then you have a second option is to just replace it with an accessible, with an accessible plugin. But third party plugins are very tricky because you can't control them and they're usually 99% of the time they're not accessible unless they have like accessible plugin in the name. So just a fair warning. Main landmark Wistia video player frame clickable play video. Stephanie Newman introduction dot MP4 button. There we go. See, this is a button that has a very good name. So when I land on it, I know exactly what's gonna happen. Okay, so if I press it, the video is gonna play. Search video button. Okay. 
Play bar slider midnight. Clickable show captions menu button collapsed. Clickable mute button. Volume slider slider 100. Okay, it seems like the controls of the video are very much very accessible, so I can press them and they tell me what they do. So I think the, the video component is good. There is two quirks I don't like. So there's the focus disappeared. That means I have to email the company and ask them, hey, what's going on? Maybe I didn't install it properly. Okay, maybe it's maybe it's my fault or maybe it's your fault. You have to fix it or I'll go to your competitor. <laughs> so let's move on from the testimonial. Excuse me, let's move on from the from the video. Clickable show settings menu I'm button. Going to... Testimonials heading level two. Okay, now I'm in the testimonials. I highly recommend. And I am I press the, the down key to go on browse mode. And when I do that, that means the screener is just going to read a lot of the text. Existing website to contact Stephanie Newman. She will deliver exactly what you need. There you go. And if I press the Not down arrow again. Sullivan. Sorry, if I press the down arrow again, it continues reading. Graphic Dr. Kristen Sullivan. My favorite part. There you go. And then you get the idea. So now let's move on to the next heading, which is my AMP and accessibility cursor. So I'm going to press H again. And how users browse websites is with screen readers is that they either press the tab multiple times or they use, they jump from heading to heading. It's not, they're not, it's not always linear. Like maybe not actually a better, better, better thing to say is be, it's rarely linear. They rarely go from the top of the website to the bottom just by pressing tab or pressing the, pressing the arrow key. They're, they're like us sighted users. When you go on a new website, for example, let's say you want to buy shampoo and you go to website, you, you could want to find, okay, what shampoo I want, add it to cart and then check out. Okay. You don't want to hear the story of the company, how they get started, what their favorite dog is or something like that. So, uh, how are you? Okay. So, we can, I, I have some questions I can, uh, Dewey asks, how accessible is the native video element? That's a good question. So the, the native video element is different in every browser. Okay, every browser is responsible for their own native video element. So you have the HTML5 video element that you use to display video, but it's different in every browser. So, and it's not very accessible, believe it or not. Every browser has their own problems. Chrome, Firefox, Safari, Native HTML is not accessible. That's why we have area. Area enhances the accessibility of HTML. So that's why you have some media players being advertised as being accessible because the native one isn't very accessible. There is a very good article by someone, I forgot their name. They're like a expert accessibility celebrity or something. So they wrote, they did thorough testing of the native element, native video element, and it's not really good. And then Santosh asks, how are you toggling between modes? I think there's a, there's a command you can use, but usually be, between browse mode and input mode, you, it toggles automatically. If you're on a button or a link, it's going to toggle input mode. If you're outside, it's going to toggle browse mode. So it's usually automatic. Fresh, I, I highly recommend. Okay, so I'm going to go. I am an accessibility courses heading level two. See. Okay. So this is let's see. Creating accessible websites course. Watch free lectures link. So the the card seem to be coded uh, pretty well. So I can just skip. And email that it required invalid entry has auto complete. Okay. Blank. We have the same problem with the newsletter form. See, I have two forms on my website and. Both times the users are going to land on the email and they're not going to know what they're inputting their email for. Okay. They could be signing their the house, their advice to their house, but they're not going to know that. So I have to fix that. And then afterwards I have my icon links. Content info landmark. I teach on Udemy visited link. Content info is a landmark that refers to the footer. So the header is called the banner and the footer is called content info. Yeah, don't ask me why why it's different from the HTML element name. I don't know. I don't know why they just named it footer and header, but it's a whole thing. I don't know. So now let's let's test the icon links. The the icon links are the the, the icons you see at the bottom. And I see people making a mistake of just adding links or not adding any area label at all. Skillshare account visited link. Visited link, LinkedIn account visited link, Facebook account visited link. There we go. 
So they seem to be coded correctly. Okay. So um, I think that's it for my website. There are things I have to fix, definitely. And if I had tested the website when I coded it, I wouldn't have had problems like that. It's also a good idea to test your website every six months uh, because you always add or remove features and do a thorough testing. If you have a portfolio, and you should, do a thorough testing every six months with all the screeners you can and you have, fix the issues, and then after six months, you do it again because you never know which page you added that passed on NVDA was not going to pass on a voiceover or talkback. Okay, I think that's enough on my website. On on now, let's go to Sunday Rally. Uh, okay, I don't see any questions. So we can go to Sunday Rally. Now that this is a multi-million e-commerce site that sells uh, skincare. So I'm, I'm testing on Firefox, by the way. So NVDA works the best on Firefox. I think it's mostly used on Chrome, but I'm not sure, but it works the best on Firefox. That means if if you test it on Firefox and Chrome and there's like one weird bug on Chrome that can be fixed, it's fine. It, it will pass because NVDA is optimized to work the best with Firefox. Each screen reader is optimized to work best with specific browser. For example, JAWS works best with, I think, Internet Explorer 11. I don't know if that's still the case, but I think it's Internet Explorer 11. And then VoiceOver works the best with Safari. Now you can install Chrome and then use VoiceOver, but you're going to have some weird bugs that can really be fixed. Okay, let's start. Let's start uh, testing this website now. HTTP/sundayriley.com collapse. Sunday Riley document busy. Accessibility options, region use, website and keyboard navigation and screen reader mode button. Read the website's accessibility statement button. Sunday Riley logo. You. Okay, so the first thing I can see in this website is that they don't have a skip link. And this is bad because what if I want to skip the navigation? Their first, navi their first um, interactive element is use website and keyboard navigation screen reader mode. So they're using what is called an accessibility widget, which is something I really don't like because accessibility widgets are pretty useless. And usually companies who don't want to pay for an accessibility audit and accessibility developer, AKA freelancers or companies who do accessibility for their living, they hire a company and pays them like hundred dollars a month. And they're like, oh, you don't have to spend all that money. You can just have an accessibility widget. And that's that thing right here. And I just, I hate it. It doesn't make your website accessible. It can even make it more inaccessible and it, it, it doesn't comply with the WIG Act. So what this website tried to do is they're trying to cut corners with accessibility, which I see all the time. So, uh, and instead of skip links, they have this weird button that I don't want to use. So let's let's continue browsing. Read the website's accessibility statement button. Okay, that's that's really, <laughs> it's really weird to me why they have a link to the accessibility statement at the top. But their website doesn't seem to be accessible. So they have the statement, but they don't have, they haven't done the work for it. And why is it at the top when someone lands on their page? Like people don't care if you have an accessibility statement, they care if they can use your site. Okay. So that's just ridiculous. Um, let's continue browsing. Sunday Riley logo graphic visited link Sunday Riley. Okay. I am at the Sunday Riley logo and it seems like, what is it? Let's try it again. Sunday Riley logo graphic visited link Sunday Riley. Okay, they have Sunday Riley logo and then they say graphic link. So uh, if I press the link, I don't know where I'm going to go. I'm going to go to the about this page. Which page am I going to go when I press this link? I don't care if it's the Sunday Riley logo. Okay, so that's fair right here. List with nine items shop link. Okay, another violation. They're not using an HTML landmark, so they're violating a WIGAC rule that says you need to use landmarks in your page. They're just using an unordered list because remember how on my website, when you land on navigation, it said navigation list with nine items. Well, over here, it just says list with nine items, shop link. So that means that it can just be a bunch of links put together. I can assume it's a navigation, but since they're not using the, the proper element, that's a fair right here. So this is something that you have to mark as well. And now let's let's go again. Kids link. 
looks like you are attempting in home on sub unknown navigation dialogue it looks like you are attempting to use the website with the keyboard do you want to turn on keyboard navigation accessibility okay so they're trying to they're trying to force you to use their widget somehow and it's really funny because this is an HTML5 native dialogue element, okay? And when I tested it earlier, Chrome and NVDA, it didn't read the contents of the dialogue. It just popped up and then the focus was moved on cancel. <laughs> like, I kid you not, if you test this website with NVDA on Chrome, it's not gonna read the contents of this dialogue. It reads it on Firefox. And I know we talked earlier how there's like a weird bug on Chrome and NVDA, you don't have to worry about it, but this is really important. If the user doesn't, hear this dialogue, it it can potentially impede them from using the site. Like even, even though I hate accessibility widgets, okay, maybe in this case they can be useful. So that's another fall right here is they're using a dialogue element that I know the majority of screeners don't read it. So it looks like your okay button, cancel button, Sunday Riley document. Link hits. Okay. Um I also see that they don't have any they don't have a default focus rank. Access Sunday list kids dialogue it looks like can Oh this is really bad the dialogue just keep popping up. I think it pops up only if you're at the header, but this is so bad for accessibility. Also the website doesn't have a focus ring, which is another another problem. And you might be thinking, well Stephanie, if someone's using a screen or they're probably blind and they don't need a focus ring. Well Actually, a lot of sighted users use screeners as well. So, for example, people who need want to have things read in the background or they're doing other things or they're suffering from dyslexia. They also use a screener even, even if they're sighted. So how I test websites that doesn't have a focus ring is I usually enable the focus ring of the program. So let's enable the focus ring of NVDA. This is an add-on I installed. So what I'm going to do is... search box. I'm going to Results. enable it now. So how you enable it is you click tools, you right click the NVDA icon, tools, and then you go to manage add-ons. That's over here. And then I have the I have the focus highlight add-on. Now it's currently disabled, but I'm going to enable it because the website doesn't have a focus ring. Restart NV. And then you have to restart NVDA to take effect. Press Sunday Riley Mozilla Firefox. Sunday Riley document. Loading NVDA. There you go. Now we have a focus oh, ring. Okay. Oh, Sunday Riley Mozilla Firefox. Sun and NVDA speech view. Sun listen. It <sighs> Terrible. Okay, uh, the focus ring is not landing. Okay, there we go. Search button for website button search. Zero link. Okay. Search button. Now you see how we have a focus ring. It's really easy, much easier to test with a focus ring <laughs> than without. So that's another violation of the website. Now let's go to the back or our basket and see how many items we have right there. Zero. This is another violation because right now we don't know how many items we have in our basket and zero means nothing. If you're using a screen that and you're blind, zero might mean anything. What is zero? The correct way would be you have zero items in your cart. This is what the screen reader should announce, but somebody didn't care about accessibility. Shop now link on, on screen on equal Oops. chart goals, Sunday Riley, Re scrub your way. Ah. Read the list. Charcoal smoothie heading level one. Exfoliate from head to toe. Sunday. Okay, so now I'm down here. And I'm going to browse via the H key. So I'm going to see how their headings are. Like a tall glass of water for your skin heading level two. Power of three heading level two. Okay, their headings are good. I can appreciate that. Cellars heading level two. Good genes lactic acid treatment link heading level three. After pay information of seek good genes lactic app, good genes lap, good genes lactic acid treatment graphic link, good genes lactic acid treatment link heading level three. Okay, so they have the same link twice. Good genes lactic 
acid treatment graphic link. Okay, that could be coded better, but I think it's okay for now. If it was just a graphic that repeated good genes like the acid treatment, I would have flagged it because the image is the image alt is going to be redundant in this case because we already have the name of the product below. But it's a link, so it's duplicate links. Duplicate links are not a weak gag violation, okay? Oops, I pressed refresh, I think. A lot of people think that they're weak gag violation, but they're not. Oh, okay, I did not press or did I? Yeah, I think I accidentally went to the product. So if you have duplicate links on your site, as long as you name them the same way, as long as they have the same uh, area label or the same link test, they pass. Okay, don't worry about them. Clickable list with not meet. Combo box one blue and else left. Sunday. Okay. Alert. Accept. Read. Sunday run. Accept. Read. List. Cancel button. Okay, this this website is just terrible. It just keeps jumping to the header, and it just the apparently if you use the keyboard on the heading, it the the alert keep jumping up. <laughs> this is just impossible to use. Like I'm struggling and I've been using screeners for such a long time. So yeah, you can see the difference between an accessible, like my website was, even though it has its problems, to a website that's just a nightmare to use with a screen reader. Uh, let, let me try to get, like, let, me tr let me see if I can get this item. Like, let me try if I can find, um, if I can add it to card and know what item it is. So let's try one more time. Slash 30 ml collapse. Okay, this combo box doesn't have a label, so I don't know what I'm choosing right now. One fluid ounces for what? What am I buying? Is this a product? It doesn't say. Add to cart button. After pay information opens a dialog link. Okay, the, the opens a dialog link, that's actually good. Okay, so the next interactive element was going to be product details. So after the afterpay, I want to look at the product details. So I want to make an informed decision before I buy this lactic acid cream, okay? It's $85. I want to know what the hell I'm paying my money for. But I cannot select the product details with my screen reader. It just jumps. And the reason that is, is because they're not using a button or somehow they have disabled the button. If I use my mouse, it's going to open. But if I use a screen reader, if I use my keyboard, the screen reader is not going to catch it because they made it to skip. Actually, let's look why they did it. Let's go. Developer tool. They probably didn't use a button or an interactive element, and that's why. So whenever you're testing, you need to... Yep, there you go. They used a paragraph for a button. So they attached a JavaScript event handler to the button, and that's why the screen reader thought, oh, this is just a paragraph. I don't need to focus it, which makes sense, but it was coded terribly. Lecture has ended.